Hey everyone! While creating the Jingaloid, solely for fun, I realized that it was actually a pretty interesting character, and was a good opportunity to go over tileable textures and baking normals. The first thing that I'm going to work on, and I think one of the hardest parts, is going to be this colorful button or coin pattern. There's a couple of ways that you could go about creating this, but I want to make a tileable texture that we can apply to our model later. Tileable textures are great since they prevent obvious seams at transitions after UV unwrapping, and you'll be able to use this in all sorts of ways in the future to create your own cool custom textures. Let's start by deleting the default cube in object mode and adding a plane with Shift-A. Also, your interface might look slightly different. I'm using Blender 2.93 in this video, and Blender 3.0 just came out. Hit numpad 7 to go into top view, and here's the plane that we're going to build our texture on. To begin with, we're actually going to create these buttons in 3D space. Let's go into wireframe view, hit shift A, and add a circle object. Switch to vertex select over here, and make sure everything is selected. You can hit A to select all if it isn't. Then scale this circle down by 0.1, so hit S, 0.1. We want to move this circle to the bottom corner of our plane, so hit G to grab and type X negative 1. Hit G again and type Y negative 1. Zoom in and confirm that your circle is lined up with the corner of the plane, since we want this texture to tile. So let's switch to the modifier tab and use some array modifiers to place our buttons evenly across the plane. Change the count to 10. 11 would fill this plane completely, but we want a little bit of space. Let's real quick go back to the original circle, hit E to extrude a loop of vertices, and hit Enter to confirm. Now hit S, 0 to merge this loop at the center of the circle. And now if we zoom in over here, we can see it's lined up perfectly. But we want some space between our buttons, so change back to 10, and uncheck Relative Offset. Switch to Constant Offset, and set the distance to 0.2 repeated. Relative Offset uses the object's bounding box to determine the distance between objects, whereas Constant Offset uses world space. As an added benefit of using world space, if you were to scale the original circle, they would all stay in place, whereas relative would make them accordion. Hit numpad 5 to go into orthographic view, so we can zoom in more easily. Zoom in, and you can see it all lines up perfectly. Click this drop down arrow on the array modifier, and choose duplicate. Collapse the first array modifier, and let's adjust the settings on the new modifier. Switch the count to 2, and zero out the offset. I think that 0.2 on Y and about 0.112 on the X looks pretty good to me. Feel free to slide it around until you're happy with it. Let's duplicate this ray one more time and adjust it. Let's use 0 on the X axis and 0.4 for the Y. And if we set the count to 6, it should line up. If you're wondering how to figure out how to line them up perfectly, I did the math, but trial and error is a valid alternative. And that's the button spacing all figured out. Let's name this object in the outliner so we don't lose it. And with it selected, tab back into edit mode. Now we're going to adjust the shape to try to replicate the button details. Select and delete these center vertices with X. If they aren't selected, you can use circle select with C to select them all at once. While holding Alt, click an edge to select the entire loop of vertices. Hit numpad 1 to go into front view. Hit E to extrude a loop up, and scale it down with S. The exact placement is up to you, I'm just going to attempt to make something that resembles this. So keep extruding and scaling edge loops to build your shape. If you want to round an edge, Alt select the loop, hit Ctrl B and drag your mouse. Scrolling the mouse wheel will add more cuts to the bevel. Select all and under the face menu, select Shade Smooth. Alt select the innermost edge again and keep building the shape. To fill in the final opening, extrude a loop and scale by zero. If we zoom way in on a reference, there's kind of a discernible edge somewhere in the middle here. So let's add a bevel here with Control B. We're about to do some destructive stuff, so let's change the object's name so that we know it's the original, and then in object mode copy it with Shift D. Disable the visibility of the original button object. Let's also create an archive collection in the outliner, and drop the original buttons in there. Select the new button object, and in object mode, apply the array modifiers from the top down. Tab into edit mode, double tap A to deselect, then hit C, and select part of each of these floating circles. Hit Ctrl L to select all linked geometry, and hit X to delete these circles. So, let's select the plane and rename it something like plane.lowpoly. Duplicate with Shift D and name it plane.highpoly. 
Disable the visibility of the low poly plane, select the high poly plane, and add a boolean modifier. Use the eyedropper and select the buttons. Switch the mode to Union. And the shading is maybe a little weird at the Union, which I attempted to fix by lowering the button geometry slightly on the Z axis, but that didn't help at all, so I realized that the button's normals were probably flipped. Select the button object, and in edit mode, select all with A. Hit Alt-N and choose Recalculate Outside. Switch the boolean on the high poly plane back to Union if it isn't for some reason, and disable the visibility of the button object. It looks good to me, so apply the boolean modifier. Now let's get set up to bake the high poly plane's normals to the low poly plane. Turn the low poly plane back on and select it. Go into the shader editor, click new here. Then hit Shift A and add an image texture node. Click new to create a new texture. This will be the texture we bake the normals onto. Name it something cool, like button normal, and change the color space to non-color. Hit Shift A and add a normal map to the material. You can connect these nodes up now if you want, or wait till later. I'm not the boss of you, you can do what you want. Switch over to the image editor and open up the new texture. Head into the Render Properties and make sure the engine is set to Cycles. Expand the Bake menu and switch this drop-down to Normal, because we bake in normals. Check Selected to Active. Enable Cage, and I like using a Cage Extrusion of 0.5. It seems to work well in most occasions. We're going to bake the normals from our selected object onto our active one, as it says here. So select the High Poly Plane in the Outliner, and while holding Control, select the Low Poly Plane. Hit Bake, and watch as the normals bake. Here's our finished normal map, which looks pretty good. These are the colors that you're looking for in a normal map. If you get bright reds, yellows, or greens, it means there's an issue. Probably that some of the normals are flipped. Disable the visibility of the high poly plane, and throw it in the archive collection. Toss the buttons in there too. Here's the first mistake I made. Before you leave this editor, click this image menu and save your normal map externally. I forgot to do this and had to rebake this texture later. Go back into the shader editor, and in the render properties, switch to Eevee. Connect the normal map to the principal shader. And now the magic! If we move our light around, it looks like our plane has depth. But in fact, is just a plane, which is pretty cool. Now we want to create this cool random color texture for our buttons. Disable the visibility of this plane temporarily, and go find the button object in the archive collection. Enable it and the collection visibility. Duplicate this object and pull it out of the archive folder. Rename it to something that makes sense. This object has a lot of geometry that we don't need, and I don't want my computer to explode, so we're going to real quick reduce it. In edit mode, select all and scale by zero on the Z axis to flatten it out. These other buttons are in the archive collection, so disable the visibility of that. And in the modifier tab, add a decimate modifier. Switch to planar mode, tab into object mode, and now there's all these weird artifacts. It's because the center vertices on our buttons weren't merged. So let's go back into edit mode, select all, hit M, and choose by distance. Now it's safe to head back into object mode and apply the modifier. Tab back into edit mode, and this is a little less extreme on the poly count. If you enable the low poly plane again, you can see this new object lines up pretty well, which is good. So, back to the new color object. Head into the shader editor down here if you aren't already. Since we're not actually going to bake this texture, we're going to render it, let's set up our camera. Select the camera, hit N to bring up this menu. Zero out all the transforms except for the Z location. Hit numpad 0 to go into camera view. Click the output properties tab and change the resolution to whatever you want your texture to be. I'm going with 1024 by 1024. Click the tab that looks like a camera, and change the camera type to orthographic. This scale is equal to how many units on the viewport grid it renders. So right now it's at 7.3, and we want it at 2. So now it should line up perfectly with the plane. In the Render Properties tab, let's switch the color management from Filmic to Standard. That way the colors from the material, and in the 3D viewport, appear the same. And we're going to use a Cycles Only node in the shader, so change it back to Cycles. Select this button color object, and create a new material. Select this shader and hit Shift S. Now we can change this node into another one of our choosing. Find a mission shader, and select it. Head into the UV editor. 
In the 3D viewport, make sure you select all in edit mode. Then hit U to unwrap, choose project from view. Go back into the shader editor and add a geometry node. We have this random per island output, which will come in handy. Connect to the color input on the emission shader. Hit Shift A, add a hue saturation node, and plonk it down here. Make sure the connection is to the hue value. Select a nice color, and that almost looks good as is. We might want some randomness on the saturation value, so also add a white noise texture and a separate XYZ node. This changes our single random value into 3, so we can randomize our saturation as well. I was going to use a map range, but then decided that a color ramp would be far better for controlling our values. Switch to constant, and set the color ramp up so that you can get the colors that you want. I think this looks pretty good, and you can adjust this if you want to make one of the other color variants. Make sure under the film dropdown, transparent is enabled. And now render the scene, and save this image externally. <laughs> Try to remember to save things. Once it's rendered, we can disconnect all of this from our emission shader, and add an image texture. Open the image we just rendered, and connect it to the color of the shader. It looks pretty good, but there's one issue, the circles on the edge aren't one solid color. So select the corner circles one at a time, and rotate them by 90 degree increments, the goal being to get the same color in the rendered area on all corners. Now switch the pivot point to individual origins, and let's get these circles along the edge fixed as well. Make sure everything is deselected, then along these two edges, select a vertex on each of the border circles. Hit Ctrl L, and now rotate them all by 180 degrees. Now all the colors are lined up, and we can render it once more. You can save this as a new texture, or save it over the last render, however you want to do it. As long as you save it. Change the image texture over to the new image, and it's looking good. We don't need to see this object anymore. Turn back on the low polyplane, with it selected go into the shader editor and add an image texture to the material. Open up the button color render, and connect it to the shader base color. Add a mix RGB node here. Connect the alpha channel to the factor, and put the color output in the bottom color slot. Adjusting this upper color input will change the texture's background color. Name this material so we can find it later. Make sure all of your textures are saved. Save them. And there we have it! A tileable material based on the Jingaloid button texture, which we'll use on our Jingaloid once we build it. And now all of these objects can be archived because we don't need them for the rest of the character creation. Thank you for watching! I hope you've enjoyed! We'll start making the model in the next part. Please subscribe and like the video! Drop us a comment on what you'd like to see us make! If you'd like to help the channel grow, share a video! Also, we have a Patreon! Thank you again! Stay safe! I love you all! Goodbye!